I wanted to walk you through the drought situation here in Arkansas. This is John Lewis, a senior forecaster with the National Weather Service here in Little Rock. Looking at the year as a whole and focusing on the plus minus column in this uh, table, uh, precipitation in quite a few areas actually above average for the year, including Fort Smith, over 10 inches above average uh, through July 11th. Some below average numbers though, Texarkana and El Dorado, two to more than four inches below average uh, for the year. Nothing really on this table looks alarming as far as drought is concerned. It's in the last 30 days where we start getting alarming uh, with the rapid drying occurring, uh, precipitation departures from two to more than four inches across much of the state. Looking at it graphically, big hole in the precipitation field from Arkansas back to the southwest into Texas. Not a whole lot of rain in these areas. That's because a big ridge of high pressure has built over the region with rain uh, tending to go around the high to the north and east of Arkansas. Big ridges of high pressure in the summer generally mean sinking air and a lot of heat. Uh, when you need, uh, when you're looking for showers and thunderstorms, you need rising air, taking the moisture aloft to build clouds. Haven't seen a whole lot of that lately here across the state. Precipitation departures uh, again in much of Arkansas from two to more than four inches. They're from western Arkansas and eastern Oklahoma. Some dark red colors indicating departures from four to at least five inches uh, from June the 12th through July 11th. Just had a 31 day uh, dry streak here at the North Little Rock Airport from uh, June the 11th through July the 11th. That's 31 days without rainfall, which is the third longest streak on record going back to 1975. Here's the heat part of the story, uh, starting with July the 8th. Quite a few uh, temperatures there above 100 degrees. In some areas, uh, it was the hottest day in almost 10 years, including Fayetteville and Jonesboro. The very next day, uh, just as hot or even hotter, Texarkana coming in with 108 degrees on July 9th, which was the hottest temperature uh, locally since 2011. It's not only Arkansas, it's uh, much of the middle part of the country with above average heat here in the first part of July. Uh, some areas three uh, to more than six inches there from Arkansas, parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, and back southwest into Texas. When you have this much heat and uh, very little rainfall, the groundwater tends to go away. Soil moisture is uh, disappearing uh, very quickly. Uh, the white areas on the graphic would indicate the soil moisture levels pretty close to normal. And in Arkansas, we're getting away from that. It's uh, very dry, though, as you head back to the southwest into Texas, uh, into western Kansas. Very dry conditions uh, in that part of the world. Because of the dryness, uh, burn bans are popping up quickly in Arkansas. As of July the 16th, 56 of 75 counties were affected by burn bans. And the wildfire danger is also increasing, moderate to high wildfire danger again as of July the 16th, with the highest uh, danger there in the northwest counties. As far as drought, uh, it's not terrible yet, but it is uh, degrading uh, pretty quickly, moderate to severe drought conditions in uh, much of northern parts of eastern Arkansas as of July 12th and also in parts of the southwest. Abnormally dry conditions were noted elsewhere. Nationwide drought in Arkansas but worse drought as you head to the southwest into Texas. Look at that a lot of D3 and D4 conditions and that extends westward a lot of the western United States with similar conditions and these have been ongoing for several years now. 
So a quick summary so far, our drought issues are the result of several factors. One, persistent high pressure over the region, especially recently. A lack of rain in the last 30 days with a lot of sites reporting no rain. And extreme heat and the hottest temperatures in almost 10 years in some cases. One of the big reasons for our uh, developing uh, heat and drought is uh, La Nina. We're looking for water temperatures uh, close to the equator in the Pacific Ocean, and those water temperatures have to be below average to get La Nina, which is uh, what we have currently. Some of the numbers there you see, 2020 into 2022, we're looking at uh, numbers from minus 1, minus 1.1. 1 .1. uh, that's uh, degrees uh, below average in Celsius. Uh, it's a, we call that a moderate La Nina, or moderate strength, and it's the strongest La Nina we've had uh, in about 10 years, going back to 2010 uh, to 2012. And it was in those years we had uh, very hot summers. As a matter of fact, uh, 2011 was the hottest summer on record, at least tied for the hottest. Uh, 2010 was the fourth hottest summer and 2012 was the 12th hottest summer. So we had three summers in the uh, top 15 uh, hottest going back to uh, 1895 and all of these were La Nina summers. Focus a little bit more on 2012. Not only was it uh, in a hot, uh, what, a top 15 hottest summer, it was also the hottest year on record uh, here in Arkansas, 3.2 degrees above average. It was the 10th driest year on record, almost 10 inches below average, and one of the worst droughts in recent memory developed. Looking at a drought time series, uh, you can clearly see the drought of 2012 kind of stands out in this graphic. 80% of Arkansas had at least D3 conditions and about 50% was in D4, most of that 50% in the northern half of the state. Another thing uh, in this graphic to notice is you get uh, toward uh, where we are now, uh, quite a few years there uh, without hardly any drought at all. Those, those were very wet years uh, leading up to 2022. The other thing to notice is there's a, there are gaps in the drought. So when referring to the previous graphic, droughts in Arkansas are common and can be awful, such as in 2012, but they don't last or don't often last. Looking at Arkansas rainfall from that 2012 horrible drought year to this year, there are some differences to note. 2012, we only had uh, six inches of rain statewide from April through June, which was uh, a little over eight inches below average. 2022, different story leading into the summer. From April through June, we were actually above average uh, by about two inches and had 10 more inches of rain than we did in 2012. So a better situation situation overall. Not the case in Texas. Uh, 2022 from April through June, about five inches of rain and three to four inches below average, which kind of explains why the drought situation in Texas is a lot worse than it is in Arkansas at this point. Now on the flip side of La Nina is El Nino. Those are above average water temperatures along the equator in the Pacific Ocean. And you see we're looking for red colors in the table. Uh, that's where we're looking for El Nino. So in 2015, 2018, 2019, a lot of El Nino there and almost 2020. I say almost because to get El Nino you have to have temperatures at least half a degree Celsius above average for five consecutive three month periods. So point, if you're looking at 2019, 0.5 there in October, November, December, OND, and also in November, December, January, extending into 2020, also 0.5s there. And then by the time you get to February, February, March, April of 2020, it's only 0.4. If that had been a 0.5, then you would have had five consecutive and an El Nino. So almost. And in those years, 2015, 19, 18, and 2020, well above average rainfall across the state. Matter of fact, double digit 
uh, departures above average uh, in those four years. Very wet as far as ranks, 5th, 7th, 9th, and 11th wettest years. And going back to 2009, which was actually ranked first with over 70 inches of rain, was also an El Nino year. Looking back in the Pacific Ocean, temperatures uh, below average along the equator, uh, denoted in blue, so clearly La Nina conditions there in June 2022. What do the models think are going to happen moving forward? Well, looking at the zero line on the graphic, uh, that would be right between El Nino and, El and La Nina, which we would call neutral conditions. All of the models, all of the lines on the graphic are generally below the zero line, so we're in La Nina territory. And that goes from now, or uh, let's say uh, JJA, which would be June, July, August, all the way through the rest of the year and into the early part of next year, which is February, March, April, FMA. So the La Nina is expected to continue. And with these conditions, the Climate Prediction Center predicted a warmer uh, than normal uh, July, which is what we have experienced with a confidence uh, in uh, warmer than normal conditions, the highest from Kansas into Texas and into portions of Western Arkansas. Below average precipitation in some of the same areas that was in the forecast and that has materialized. Moving forward, the confidence in above average temperatures shifts a little bit to the west, at least the highest confidence. So we're looking out toward the Rockies, but still looking for above average temperatures here in Arkansas from July and August into September of 2022. The below average precipitation areas also shifts a little bit to the northwest. That's where the confidence in uh, drier than uh, normal conditions are expected. With wetter than normal conditions from the central Gulf Coast up through the Carolinas and into the mid-Atlantic region. These are also the, some of the same areas where we could have increased tropical activity. As a matter of fact, uh, as of May, the forecast called for a 65% chance of a, a more active uh, tropical uh, season with the 14 to 21 named storms, 6 to 10 hurricanes, and 3 to 6 major hurricanes. Putting that into perspective, the average numbers for named storms is 14. So Again, above average there, uh, six to 10 hurricanes is above, a little bit above the, the seven, which is average, and then uh, three to six major hurricanes. And the average, in an average year, we should have three. As far as the most active years in the tropics, at least the Atlantic Basin 2020, we had 30 named storms. Uh, 2005, we had 28, that was the year of Katrina. There's 2021 with 21 named name storms. And interestingly, you'll see there on the list, uh, 2010, 2011, and 2012, all with 19 storms and all La Nina years. It seems that when you get into La Nina years, the, uh, uh, the activity in the tropics picks up. Reason for this, uh, as far as more storms in the tropics is with La Nina, you end up with less shear uh, over the water. Uh, tropical systems tend to like quiet conditions and less disruption. So when there's less wind aloft, they tend to, uh, to uh, have a tendency to grow a little bit better, become stronger, moving from usually the uh, west coast of Africa there into the Caribbean Sea and then making a turn up the Atlantic coast we're heading into the Gulf of Mexico. We've had our share of tropical systems over the years. In 2005, it was Rita uh, from the Gulf of Mexico. We had uh, ongoing drought conditions, and then Rita brought three to six inches of rain. The rain band extending from, or the heaviest rain extending from Louisiana through Arkansas, Missouri, and into the Ohio Valley. But we also had uh, 15 tornadoes spawned with Rita. Gustav arrived in September of 2008. This was a big rain producer, uh, abundant rainfall, roughly the same areas as Rita. 
So again, uh, Louisiana through Missouri and uh, then turning east into the Ohio Valley. A lot of rain in September and some isolated tornadoes, but really Gustav was the big rain producer. More recently in 2020, uh, three to six inches of rain with Hurricane, uh, the remnants of Hurricane Laura in the state from south central through central and uh, northeast Arkansas. A lot of wind as well, 45 to over 55 mile an hour gusts. And we had our fair share of tornadoes, a lot of tornado warnings there in northeast Arkansas. And we ended up with eight tornadoes for the event, mostly in the northeast, which made this the uh, most active or the biggest uh, August tornado event uh, in Arkansas history. As far as the tropics, uh, so August and September here in Arkansas is when we tend to get our tropical systems, especially looking at the last three, uh, the, the last three that we just went through. And that just so happens to be when the tropics uh, become uh, the most active, especially in September. Uh, so there in the Gulf of Mexico in August, you see some, uh, there's some green shading there, which indicates uh, 30 to 49 uh, name, named storms uh, per 100 years. And that increases to 50 to 69 storms per 100 years in September. So we should start seeing things ramp up as we head through August and into September. Putting this into forecast form, uh, overall, really not much change in the overall pattern is expected uh, this summer. Above average temperatures and below average precipitation should lead uh, to a worsening drought here in Arkansas. High pressure will wobble away from the region from time to time. Uh, that's occurred in the past and it should happen again this year. Should result in temporary periods of less heat and better chances of rain. In the late summer, early fall, tropical moisture may come into play, especially August into September. Parts of the state could experience significant rain if there happens to be an incoming tropical system from the Gulf of Mexico. That is a maybe. Drought and increased tropical activity are both common traits with La Nina, which will likely persist through the end of 2022. Have any questions about any of this stuff? Just uh, shoot me an email. I'm at john.lewis at noaa.gov.